thank you for coming today. Uh, my, my question that I wanted to open with is, how do you want to be remembered? How do you want people to remember you? What do you want them to know about you after uh, your body is gone? And are you doing anything actively to, I don't know, contribute to how you want to be remembered? If I spoke to each of you individually, if I pulled you aside and said, how do you want to be remembered? Uh, I'm sure that most of you would say things like, I want to be remembered as being a good person. I want to be remembered as being generous. I want to be remembered as being kind. Uh, some of you who have had to battle with adversity or challenge in your lives or trauma or whatever would probably say, I want to be remembered as, as a fighter, as somebody who rose up to meet challenge and to face it and to, to really sort of experience it because the definition of experience is to actually um, move through something with no trail of it left behind. Personally, I'd like to be remembered as somebody who did his best to create space for people to come into that space, much like this and every workshop and class I've given this weekend, uh, so that people could reconnect to whatever it is they felt disconnected from. And we disconnect from our bodies and we disconnect from you know, what we believe is normal and we disconnect from uh, images of what we should look like based on magazine covers and we disconnect from our own intuition and we disconnect from our families and there's a lot of disconnection happening in the world. And it took me a couple of years to understand that what I was doing essentially was creating space for people to reconnect to. So I'd like to be remembered as someone who did his best to create space for other people to come in and just do the work to reconnect. With that said, I'd also like to be remembered as somebody who had a, had a pretty good sense of humor, but also who did his best, you know, and who messed up every now and again and sort of learned from it and kept going. Um, the fact of the matter is, have you ever actually considered that what you do right now, like the next word that comes out of your mouth, the next social media post that you put up, uh, the next thought that sort of flutters across your mind and then informs your facial expressions is actually contributing to how you want to be remembered? Every single word you say, every social media post, every retweet, every like, every share, every thought that crosses your mind, anything that you produce that would not have been produced without you is contributing to something that I refer to as your echo. And so your echo is the energy that someone else is filled with when they talk about you or think about you. So that's your energy with them. Your echo is the energy that trails behind you in your wake. It's the energy that outlives you and that outlasts your body, your life, as we like to refer to it as. Um, it's not just energy, though. Your echo can be something that you contribute to tangibly. Like when I wrote the book, The Examined Life, um, it was a conscious effort to uh, produce something, a hard good, something that was tangible, something that would outlive me and outlast me so that what I believed was important enough to get down in that book in terms of insight, in terms of um, refocusing would outlive my body so that when I was no longer around to actually speak the words, the words remain there. But regardless, uh, it's your imprint. It's your impact. And like it or not, every single one of us has an imprint. We emanate energy. We are energy. We are energy in a human body. And that energy is palpable and it's contagious. And so my question to you is, What's your echo? And have you ever thought about it? I mean, remember, this is the energy that someone else is filled with when they think about you or talk about you. And so, I, you know, throughout the workshops and the classes this weekend, periodically I've been referring to uh, this one girl who was a friend of mine, who every time we would hang out, every time one of us would arrange to hang out with the other, uh, we would, you know, arrange to meet, and we would meet, and we would sit down, and it was just a, it was just a stream of dark coming from her. It was just her unhappy about her life and unhappy about... Uh, her body and unhappy about her job and unhappy about everything. Really, truly, just like, and I think I refer to it as like a vomit of darkness. <laughs> um, that's what it felt like. And it, it, it turned into this thing where whenever she contacted me and said, because at a certain point I would stop contacting her because it was just, I, it, you know, I just didn't want it. Uh, she would say to me, do you want to hang out? And, and immediately just thinking about her, I was filled with that heaviness. And so it came down to me having to say to her, I don't. And this is why. 
and it didn't end well, or at least it didn't go well right after that. It, it sort of has morphed into something else now. Um, but the fact of the matter is, if I would have asked her, what's your echo? How do you want to be remembered? What do you want people to know about you after you're gone? She wouldn't have said, I want to be remembered as this heavy mass of dark and death and destruction and whatever, apocalypse. She would have just said, um, I want to be remembered as a good person. And so, what's your echo? And have you ever thought of it? And, and do you understand that you're contributing to it right now? Like right now. Many people believe that life is a series of opportunities that they follow. And like when an opportunity comes to you, you follow that opportunity and it's going to lead you wherever happy is. Because that's what everybody else is doing, so why wouldn't that lead you to happy? Other people believe that life is a series of avenues and protocols, generally accepted avenues and protocols, that you just follow because everybody else is doing it. And of course, that's going to bring you to happy. Other people believe that life is just a series of fires that you put out and you'll find happy. And when I say that, putting out fires, I'm talking about you get up uh, on time to get to work, fires out. And you get to work on time, fires out. And you get your deadline in, fires out. Uh, you get back from lunch on time, fires out. You do your day, fires out. You get home in time, fires out. You take care of the kids, fantastic, fires out. You get them to bed, washed and bed, fires out. Maybe, hopefully, you've got like seven seconds for yourself, fires out. You get to bed on time because you've got to wake up on time, fires out, fires out. And then you get up, to get, or you get up the next morning to do it all over again, and they believe that la that's what life is. <sighs> that's heavy. That's not, I don't believe that that's what life is. I think life should be that thing where you get up in the morning and you can't wait to see what's coming. You can't wait to see what that specific day has in store that no other day had in store. And that really, I mean, and that's how I wake up every morning. I'm like, what's going to happen today? I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. Um, which doesn't mean that I don't have mornings where I wake up and think, oh my God, really? Is it this time? But nonetheless, um, whatever you believe life to be, it's not going to mean much if you don't have an intention. If you don't have, I've been playing with intention with the classes all weekend here, but if you don't have intention for your life, then you're going to be sort of ricocheted around like a boat on choppy waters. A clear intention matters about like, why are you working where you work? And why do you do that work? And why are you in a relationship with the person you're in a relationship with? And why do you hang out with the people you hang out with? And why do you eat the food you eat and when you eat and if you eat? And why do you sleep when you sleep and if you sleep? And why do you choose to take on as much stress as you potentially choose to take on or not even consciously choose to take on, but you take on anyway? If you don't have a clear intention, you're just going blind. And you're going to do all those things, but you're not going to be doing them actively. And to do them passively means that someone else is responsible for whatever else is happening in your life. This is about accountability. This is about you. This is about understanding that uh, we need to take more accountability and responsibility for what we are emanating into the world because what we're seeing around the world right now is the sum total of all of our energies that are, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Frenetic. We are giving off a lot of freneticism and that is contributing to chaos. And there is chaos in the world. And at this moment in time, there's a rising wave of intolerance. And, you know, the battles that are happening around the world right now in, like, Russia and the Ukraine and the Middle East and Africa and our own backyard, um, they're not just happening geographically away from us. They're happening up here every single day. They're happening in our own minds. It's the battle between good and bad, and it's the battle between light and dark. And it's the battle between saying the words that we feel compelled to say, but not knowing if they're going to be well received, so we sort of tweak them and play with them. Um, every single one of us battles with this. And without a clear intention, you're just going to get swept up into it. It's like a pinball that just gets ricocheted from like point A to point B to C to D, and it's like you have no say in it. And I don't want to uh, falsely convey that it's all up to us, I don't believe it's all up to us. I believe that there is a higher energy that is guiding us. With that said, I believe that we are given uh, lifeboats to navigate those choppy waters. And if we're not present enough with a clear intention to see those lifeboats, we miss them. And so we just sort of, the waves just bring us further. Um, what you do matters. And ultimately, your intention matters. Now, if your intention, if you want to be remembered as someone who uh, was generous, 
then you have got to remember to be generous. I know that sounds really straightforward and obvious, but this isn't, I'm not talking about like if you wake up in the morning. I went to um, a workshop yesterday here at Wanderlust Tromblon, and, and the teacher was talking about vision boards. This is not about you waking up uh, in the morning and looking at your vision board and saying, today, I'm gregarious. Today, I'm going to go out there and I'm just going to be friendly to everybody and it's going to be awesome uh, because that's one thing to set your intention at the beginning of the day. It's another when you're in traffic and it's hot out or it's the dead of winter. Let's talk Montreal. Um, and, uh, you know, you're late and you're sick and you're tired. Uh, how easy is it to remember that intention in that moment? To be gregarious or to be giving or to be kind or to be generous. It's harder to contribute actively to how we want to be remembered and ultimately to our echo when we're being pushed. And what we learn in yoga and what we learn in any mindfulness meditation or technique uh, is intended to be applied between stimulus and response. It's, be, it's intended to be applied between the moment that triggers us and us going off. And so very often in many cases, there's a fraction of a second in that moment. A, fr a, a fraction of a fraction of a second. My yoga, I've been also talking about this this weekend, my yoga is practiced when I'm driving in Montreal because Montreal is like Kandahar. It's not pretty. Um, it's like kill or be killed. And so for me to not react when I see somebody almost hit me on my scooter because they're holding their cell phone in one hand, that takes presence and it takes intention. <laughs> and it doesn't mean I don't have a weak moment. It doesn't mean that I don't um, rail and rage. It just means that after I do it, I thought, oh, you lost it. In that moment, you lost it. You had an opportunity to contribute actively to that echo and you lost it. And so it's a process of checking ourselves, in any given moment of checking ourselves. What's going on in the world has been triggering a lot of opinion, and people are throwing out those opinions very loosely, especially on social media where we have the advantage of like sitting at home in front of the screen and just writing something absolutely scathing that we would never say face to face in person to somebody. But we write it and then we walk away and we forget it. And it's like it never happened and it, we're like, well, I got to express my opinion. The fact of the matter is, it's contributing. What you are emanating into the world is contributing. And it's not just to the world around us and to culture and to global society, it's your echo. You know, when I said that the person who refers to you and thinks about you is filled with your energy, they're not responsible for that. You're responsible for that. I'm responsible for that. We are responsible for ce qu'on dégage en français, for what we give off. And so, ultimately, this is a call to the present, as is everything I do. It's a call to the present. It's about getting out of the past. It's about getting out of the future. It's about getting out of uh, the stories that we've told ourselves about ourselves. It's about getting out of the beliefs that we walk around with about who we are and about how valid or not valid we think we are. And it's about being here. And it's about understanding that when we delve into the past and we carry those beliefs that we walk around with that are heavy, we're dragging the past into the future and then we're just dragging it into the, well, we keep dragging it into the present and then dragging it into the future. And the fact of the matter is, it's unnecessary. It keeps us small and it keeps us silent and it keeps us passive. And I believe that uh, to live a life where every morning you wake up and you can't wait to see what is, what's going to happen, uh, that's about uh, being expansive and about speaking your truth, especially when you think it's not going to be popular. It's about living unapologetically. And it's about doing it with intention. It's about asking, what do I want to be remembered for? I've had people in my life whose echoes are so strong that they have informed my echoes. They've changed my echo. They've changed the energy that I give off and with which I teach. My grandmother, she, I would have conversations with my grandmother Bless you, and we'd be watching TV. Again, bless you. Um, and, and we're in a house of God, so I'm not going to pretend that I need to be wearing any sort of <laughs> cloak. Um, my grandmother and I would be watching TV, and all of a sudden she would say, out of nowhere, she would say to me, um, don't be afraid to ask for what you want because nobody's going to do it for you. And I'd look at her and I'd be like, why did you just, what? Where did that come from? And then we'd keep the conversation going, and I'd be like, okay, whatever. Um, I'd be walking down the street and we'd be talking about something and all of a sudden she would take her knuckle, her middle finger, and she would dig it right into my thoracic spine and she would like, because I would walk hunched over, she, I'd like stand up straight and she would say to me, stand up straight, look people in the eye, show them who you are. And I'd be like, what is this, like 1500? Or do you have any more torture <laughs> mechanisms that you'd like to use on me? Um, 
she dropped those nuggets of truth, knowing somehow that they were going to land and that they were going to stick. I have uh, a friend, Chantal, who died um, in 2001, who sh her echo is with me in a way where she sort of expanded what I understand compassion to be. This is a woman who, um, number one, would take in stray cats, six stray cats, so she could rehabilitate them and find them homes. Um, and she did this after she moved to New York. And she lived in, I believe it was Queens, and it was, I remember dropping her off, her off one night at like midnight, and she had to go to the convenience store on the corner to buy the cat food to place in the alley for the cats. Uh, and she died in 9-11, and when, when they went into her place, she had 17 cats that she was taking care of. So she was referred to as the cat lady of Harlem. <laughs> um, she would walk down the street, and if, you know, she once saw a guy who was uh, in a convulsion, an epileptic fit, and she stopped everything and got down and took whatever she could find to just, like, wedge in his mouth. Didn't know him. Didn't know anything about him. Had no connection to him. She was the one who truly uh, exemplified and demonstrated what it was like to understand that what happens to one of us happens to all of us. That we are all the same. And we are all the same because we are energy. And we all share that energy. The energy that animates us into life. That's who we are. We're not our gender and we're not our face and we're not our bus size, and we're not our shoulders, and we're not our ass, and we're not our legs, and we're not our shoe size. We are energy. And as soon as we understand that we are energy, then we all of a sudden understand that we can be held accountable as to how we contribute to that energy, and understand that we're doing it anyway. That we don't have a choice in whether or not we do it, we have a choice in how we do it. So it doesn't mean that you're walking around, because, listen, I don't expect you to walk out of here and immediately be like, oh my God, okay, what do I have to do? What's my intention? Um, what I do expect is that potentially you do your best. Well, not potentially, you do your best. <laughs> uh, and your best will change. Understand that our best changes based on how we're eating and if we're eating and how we're sleeping and if we're sleeping. It changes based on how much stress we have here and here and here. And with the tongue, press, raise your hand if your tongue is pressing up against the roof of your mouth. Okay, that's tension. Um, matters on, or rather, your, 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 your best is dependent on a million different little factors, and so it will change. But ultimately, the only way that you're going to be able to purposely and purposefully contribute to your echo and to the world around you, and ultimately to how you want to be remembered, to your legacy, uh, is with intention, and it's with presence. And understand that you're a work in progress. That's sort of why we come to events like this, because we are works in progress because we understand that potentially we will have the ability to be in the presence of somebody who has done uh, work that we haven't done or is able to convey a, a concept or a notion that we have already read about or heard about, but they do it in a language, and I'm not using language as like French, English, Spanish, German, I'm saying the language, the vernacular that they choose is such that all of a sudden it resonates. That's why we do the work. And that's why we come here. And we do it with the intention of doing our best, with maybe taking a new tool and then going back out into the world and doing our best. I believe that when we look back on this period in, in history, we're going to look back on it as a dark age. And I also believe that us as uh, yoga teachers and practitioners uh, are, are almost a step ahead of the game and that we know what it takes to rise up to meet darkness with light. So this wave of intolerance that's sweeping the world, uh, that's up to us to fix. Because to a certain extent, it's simply an extension of what we are, right? Um, what I want you to know, I want you to know that you're contributing with every single thing you do. You're contributing and it's happening right now. I want you to be the future and make it better than the present. I want you to go out there and kick ass. And I want you to go out there and do your best and ultimately give everything that you do up for the sake of whatever your intention is. If your intention is to be somebody who offered connection for other people, then do everything for connection. And if you want to be remembered as a peaceful person, do everything for peace. If you want to be remembered as somebody who uh, was there for others, be there for others. Do everything that you do for the sake of being there for others. A life of service is the best life lived. And I'm not talking about going, you know, you could, you could go to, um, impoverished nations and, and be a missionary and do whatever. 
um, or a volunteer or organize an NGO or whatever, but you could also simply um, start with what's here and with what's here and with what's here. Your mind and your heart and your gut. In yoga, there's a lot of lead with your heart. I'm a big fan of bring your brains and bring your gut with you. Bring your intuition and bring your knowledge. So go out there and contribute to your echo and do it unapologetically and understand that in doing so, you will be able to look back on your life if we're blessed with that moment to look back on our life and reflect, you'll be able to do so and think, I did it. I did it the way it was supposed to be done and I did it with intention. So just contribute to your echo. Thank you very much. <laughs>